in uh, 010, as Turtle would call it. Uh, this is kind of our year to move forward and expand on all different types of uh, music news that we are bringing you, our most fabulous listeners. And part of this is having our live interviews in the studio um, with bands, artists, you know, whatever you are, we want to talk to you. And tonight we have um, an exciting band from Long Beach that we're going to be talking to, Turtle. Yeah, we in just moments, we will be talking with Eugene Owens. He's the um, singer, guitarist behind Eugene and the 1914. We're going to get him online and uh, talk with him very momentarily. And we'll discuss uh, a few things such as his upcoming album and, and whatnot. Hello? Hello? Eugene? Hello? Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's up, Eugene? It's Turtle along with Kai and Dr. J here Hi, at Eugene. End of the Show. Well, thank you so much hey, for coming on, you? man. Yeah. No problem. We've been uh, listening to your music here and uh, just having a having a bit of fun with it, man. It's it's awesome. Nice, nice. Glad you guys are enjoying it. Yeah, so I was telling them about you and a little bit backstory uh, about you, and, and most importantly, your album, uh, Troubles, that you guys are going to release in March, right? Uh, yeah, in March. I think the week of the, the release show is on the 19th. And it should come out the Tuesday before that. I think the 19th for Friday. Now, the funny thing about this album is the name, Troubles. Because you went through an entire bit of trouble just to get this <laughs> this album. album. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the way it works these days, unfortunately, sometimes. But, um, yeah, it was pretty hard for me to get everything back. Because the company that I was with, New Line, the record company, merged with Warner Brothers and... Then it was not really like it's kind of out of my hands. It was lawyers talking to lawyers, and it's not really what I do. But I did eventually get it back, and we're putting it out, and um, super psyched about it. Do you think that that kind of infringes on your creativeness? I guess when you're when you're creating the music, I mean, because you're an artist, and then you get bogged down with all the legality and the uh, you know the going back and forth. Does it kind of mess with your psyche sometimes? Um, I think yeah, you know, a little bit. Just as much as would be expected, I think more so it's just the thing of like, especially when you write a lot, and I, I, I write a lot, I write every day, is that you want to put out the album, like, as soon as you're done in the studio, you're almost like done with those songs, and, mm-hmm. and you want to get on the road and, and get them out there, and then move on to the next thing, so I haven't been able to do that, but like I said, I'm really... Um, looking forward to being able to do that now that the record is actually coming out. Um, yeah. So. Well, we're really excited about this. So, Eugene, talk to us a little bit about, I'm, I'm sure that your fans that are listening and people that maybe aren't completely familiar with you, can you talk to us a little bit about what we can expect from this album? Um, I think that it's going to be something that is pretty, you know, listenable to, for all kinds of different audiences. I have a lot of different influences, and they all kind of came together in this album. Um, it's folky, but poppy. Some of it's a little bit dancey. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, just good songs. Just, that's what I've always been into, and, and that's what I hope to do with like the rest of the albums that I make in my career, and hopefully this is the beginning of it. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. You're talking about your influences. Can you just name maybe a, a couple big influences on, on your music? Because uh, just right off the bat, I, I can think of a few, but I don't want to give any kind of, uh, you know, labels. I just want you to you say who, who influences you. Sure. Um, I think my influences don't directly go into what, what you might hear in the music. Uh, I, I just, I, like, am into so many different kinds of things and so many different types of artists. Um, I grew up playing jazz. That was a huge influence on me. Um, and I love pop and I love folk and soul and like fly and um, the folky stuff like 60s, like Bob Dylan and all that kind of stuff, Nick Drake. And, you know, even into the 80s, like Depeche Mode and all that stuff. Like everything is kind of. Yeah. I just like good songs. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> we yeah. Like too. Music. yeah. Let, let's real quickly talk about you growing up. Uh, your brother is uh, in Mars Volta, and then your other brother was in Hepcat. So, what was that like? You know, how did they shape your 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 style? If if they did in any way, 
Um, well, they're a lot older than me, but I grew up and, like, you know, kind of learned how to play music and just got into that vibe and that world and that sort of, like, artistic community of people growing up in Long Beach and Los Angeles through them, um, you know, going to their shows even when I was way underage, but somehow sneaking <laughs> in to go see them. That's awesome. Um, but, uh, just, you know, just, uh, like, pick, pick, picking up on, you know, their, their, their inspiration and they've been like very inspirational to me especially my older brother Ike um, who's just you know an amazing keyboard player an amazing uh, musician amazing producer and uh, even though we have th very different styles like you know he plays in the large Volta which is like yeah. kind of the opposite of what I do <laughs> but, <Sure. laughs> uh, but he's the same way I mean we all have an appreciation for music when I, when I was growing up I can remember stealing you know like uh his cassette tapes out of his bedroom like Tom Petty nice. and stuff like that and so he listens to all kinds of things too so it's, so it's all in the family it's all in the family yeah. that's cool it's, I like the fact that you're very well rounded too because some people lean more towards you know one style of music but I, I like that uh, you know it sounds like your album's really going to appeal to a lot of different music folks you know yeah I think so I think that's um, wasn't aiming to do that uh, like for any particular reason I wasn't trying to make like a, you know it's, it's specifically one genre I was just trying to write songs that I had in my head and they came out that way I think largely because of the influences and having that sort of like big spectrum of like music and, and uh, volume of different artists in my head and, and in my heart absolutely that, that's awesome uh, you know you had mentioned earlier that you, you write and uh, when's the best time for you when what part of the day is the best time that you write when do you feel like you you produce the best music uh i think at night um if i'm in the studio and i'm recording definitely i, I prefer to record at night a lot of those tracks that, that we ended up doing um that got on the record or happened at night we would be in the studio and, and i don't i never want to stop once we get in the studio i'd be the first person there with the engineer or whoever was <laughs> like that at Love like it. You know, noon and then like there were days that like seriously I, we would I wouldn't see we'd go from like noon and you know eat and then play and get some drinks have some drinks go <laughs> to the studio <laughs> around 10 and then keep going and there was sometimes I mean there was one time we didn't walk out of the studio until 10 o'clock in the morning the next day oh the uh, great yeah, uh, yeah. The yeah. God's flashlight love yeah. it yeah. <laughs> La lastly, um, this album you had some uh, some help with some pretty cool people. You had Ryan Adams help you mm -hmm. on, on this album, and then you had um, James E. R. Right? Yeah. And yeah. and did do they appear on the album? And what what, what kind of uh, stuff did they do in this album for you? Um, James was the producer, and uh, he was uh, we he and I kind of like co-produced the record, and uh, he did a lot of great things. Just. You know, I, he was some, somebody I grew up listening to, so I just respected him from that that point of view, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and aside from playing on the record, he brought Trader Joe's every day a bag full of. <laughs> oh my Trader gosh, my Joe's. favorite! <laughs> uh, so we always had snacks and stuff like that in the studio. <laughs> uh, and then on top of that, I mean, yeah, he played some great stuff on a lot of the songs. The, the uh, title track from the record, Troubles has James on it, um, several other of the songs have James on it, and Ryan Adams came into the studio, he was a friend of James, I didn't know him before, but he came in and uh, for a couple of days and was just brought like a whole different vibe, because he's kind of like all over the place and kind of has a crazy vibe and just laid down some guitar and a few songs, uh, namely one of the songs on the record called Just Know, um, featured him. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, now, I have you guys, you guys are playing uh, January 29th at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, right? That's opening night? That's like dive night or something? It's called Night Dive, yeah. No, and they're going to throw you in the in the aquarium or something? Or with a shark? I don't know. Yeah, we're going to be underwater with wetsuits. And Fantastic. Yeah. Like that. And, and then... Uh, Sub yeah. Submarine or something. Yeah. 